I would like to know why Nanso has found the members who are no longer students still in leadership positions. And they supposed to be giving an opportunity to other people. Some people are always seen to be in leadership positions, even though they don't run for them. And they, I don't know if I should mention names because they are also names. No, you don't need to mention names. I think for confidentiality. Yeah, for confidentiality. Yeah, no, like the names, like uh, putting the names, the example of names that are actually people that are still in Nanso that are not students. That mm -hmm. maybe you can just confirm. Uh, Okay, sure. Uh, okay. So, like, I received two names, and the first one is actually apparently Esther Simon and Luciano Gambala. Esther Simon and Luciano Gambala. Yeah. like not really like going that thing but then like you can just start like maybe just give us like your short introduction of yourself as well like before you introduce what Nanso is and like thank you so much for actually coming here for coming taking your time and coming to the podcast so yeah all right well, it's a pleasure Elizabeth I think really when it comes to issues of students concern and yeah. something that is to do with um, young people in the country for us really is now so it doesn't matter when you actually call us even if it's midnight mm -hmm. we'll actually respond because okay. this is our passion and you know we must ensure that we're always there for the Nambi child yeah, yeah. um anyways my name is um comrade Nabot de Celestino Nabot Nangolo de Celestino um I am the national secretary for political research and international affairs for the Namibian National Students Organization. Yeah. Um, amongst other positions that I hold in society is uh, having to be an alumna mm -hmm. for the African Pathfinders Leaders Initiative, that is APLA. Yeah. Um, apart from that, I formerly served on quite a number of positions in quite a number of um, youth organizations, especially there at UNAM. Okay. Uh, we also founded an organization named um, Law Association of Mooting Advocacy, mm -hmm. that is LAMA. I was also um, formerly a faculty representative for law students at the University of Namibia, um, set in um, basic structures of the organization having to be NASA, such as the um, Secretary for Political and Internal Affairs for the UNAM main campus branch quite a number of years ago. And, and you know, if I have to mention all my positions, it won't finish. But, but yeah, I think generally my vast interest is in students' activism, youth leadership and, and, and students' politics in general. And that is how I actually happen to find myself having to be part of the leaders of the national level of the Namibian National Students Organization. Yeah, yeah. I see, I see. You have quite a long list. <laughs> but it's actually like to talk to a person like a person such as uh, like a person who is very active in the community and serving a really like an important cause within the community, which is students and all that. Yeah. So yeah, before we actually dive into the main discussion, yeah. so since you are a leader and you have been involved in this leadership and you are not and everything, so first we actually going to play a sh like a, a game. Yeah. So it's a short game. You are actually not prepared for this, but then <laughs> the facial expression. But then so um, we are going to play. I'm going to give you like um, 30 seconds, like to give me leadership uh, qualities. I'm going to give you a letter within those the, within that letter. So within 30 seconds, let me just get my. So you give me a letter. Yeah. And then I mentioned it, the leadership quality. Quality within that letter. So I'm going to give you the letter N actually, since you are Nambolo and then you are from Nanso. So I'm going to give you the letter N and then you have to give me like five leadership qualities within the 30 seconds. So five leadership qualities. Yes, start, just start with letter N. Letter N. Let me just put on my my timer just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready? Um yeah, sure. That's That's okay. okay. Uh, so leadership qualities started with the letter N. Okay, let's go. The time is on. Okay, um, um, the first one I'll say neutrality. Neutrality, okay. Um, and then the second one, um, non discriminatory. Non discriminatory. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, third one, uh, and, and, and. Yo, it's actually a tough one, eh? Mm. Hold on. Let's say N. Um, what can I think of? Mm. 
I'm like, it's even done. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. And it's a difficult one. Yeah, right? but at least you got two of okay, them. Okay, yeah. So, so. <laughs> but then, okay, okay, okay. So yeah. let me, I actually have like, I actually wrote down some. Okay. So let me give you the one that I have. So I actually wrote down some. We have, um, okay, but then relation neutral neutrality. Yeah. So can you maybe explain? Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Um. So being a leader, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a space where there are different people from different backgrounds, yeah. it is important to know that you know when you are dealing with a particular task, or not, even when you're not dealing with a particular task, you must bear in mind that because of the different people from different backgrounds that you are going to be yeah. dealing with, you always need to have to put your, let's say, for example, political affiliations aside, yeah. you have to put your own personal beliefs aside and be able to understand and meet these people halfway. Yeah. Because if, let's say, for example, um, I have to apply the principles that I was raised with, so I have to apply um, principles that are probably of, of the political part that I'm affiliated to. Yeah. At the end of the day, I want to do everything based on the things that I'm, 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 I'm abiding by, understand? Yeah. Yeah. which will make people not necessarily to be comfortable whenever I'm dealing with this particular issues, whatever the is it that I'm dealing with. So it's very important that as a leader, you always have to be neutral and, 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 and impartial. So act um, normally and act everything like, you know, everything is like, um, let me just say, don't, don't necessarily have to choose a side, yeah. but understand the situation as it is, and then be able to deal with it accordingly. Accordingly. So far, you know, it's to be neutral, not being... Yeah, like not, not, not being excited. Yeah. Because if I have to choose a side, then I don't know that I won't necessarily solve stress issues as they are. Yeah. Because I want to solve it based on the side that I'm from, and then yes. they will disadvantage the people that are actually being affected. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, and then non discriminatory. Oh, well, that one is it's a bit straight to the point. Yeah, because yeah, all yeah. it says is that don't you know, discriminate people based on the different um, grounds of discrimination as yeah. stipulated for in our in the constitution. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly. Very well explained. <laughs> so, yeah, I just wrote, I think I have six of them, which is naturing, phase one. Naturing is a legal issue with naturing and notorious. And then we have mutual. Um, and then we have need as well. Oh, okay. um, and then we have you being nice. Oh, and then noble. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and noble. So yeah, and then we are going to play the last one, the last word though. Last so word. yeah, let me just, it's the last word is actually C, Celestino. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me just put on the timer. And then so you have to give us the starting with the letter C. Let so see. yes. I'm putting on the time. Let's go. Okay, um, that's confidentiality. Confidentiality. Confidence. Confi <laughs> <laughs> um, creativity. Creativity. Um, mm. Wow, I didn't see so far. Mm. Um, wait, 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 wait. wait. Mm. No, you're putting this on. <laughs> yeah. So, all your guess is from. <laughs> it's always time of my day. The last one, last one, last one, last one. Yeah. Time is up. <laughs> okay, time is up. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, confidentiality and then confidence okay. and then creativity. Yeah, so we take it just go through that. Uh, yeah, um, well, confidentiality mm -hmm. is because uh, based on the position that you hold yeah. and, and, and based on the um, issues that you're dealing with with yeah. different people, yeah. you know, students come to you and they confide in you. Yeah. On personal issues that they are going in. Yeah. Somebody will tell you about their background, about you know, things that are happening in their house and all that. Yeah. And in most cases, it's not really something that is, you know, it's something so personal yeah. that it would be so disrespectful against the individual if you have to share this information with any other person, especially if it's not person that, uh, an individual that is going to resolve the matter. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. So, as a leader, you need to be, um, to have that um, skill or that quality of being confidential. Because the, the information that you are sometimes find yourself with is information that is um, highly, uh, it can be controversial to people yeah, if you have to release it to the public. Yeah. yeah. And then confidence, well, this is just the ability where you have to believe in yourself as a leader because yeah. um, you, you, you can't be able to assist another individual or the next individual if you don't believe in yourself. Yeah. So you must have the confidence and look, I can be able to go to that office and when I come out of that office, I have resolved this matter. By fire, by force. <laughs> so you must believe in yourself. Yes. Yeah. 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 Believe in your abilities. Exactly. Um, and then the third one, creative. creative um, yeah. So in most cases, we get to be faced with problems that are so hard to solve. 
and and merely doing this um, small things that we do, let's say engagements and all that, yeah. aren't really what it takes for us to be able to resolve that particular item and that particular issue. Yeah. So it's very important that we need to sometimes be creative, think out of the box. Yeah. No, let me not say think out of the box. Let me let's say think without the box. Stop. Understand? Yeah. yeah. yeah so that's that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that you know you 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 use your creative skills and be able to see how really you can be able to resolve that matter. Because without that skill. Uh, it, it will be hard because you you either just probably resolve a twenty percent of the matter and then they won't fully um, help the person that really needed to be helped, exactly. and all, which is then going to be um, not not necessarily in a, in a good state. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to give you like the few of them that I actually wrote down, which is cultivation. I said either you need to be yeah. kind of cultivative, yeah, and then curiosity. We have compassionate okay. and then courage oh. and cele uh, celebration. Oh, okay. So yeah. So let's just now thank you so much. So let's just dive. You actually did the well like oh. then the games. So, so yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, so okay, so maybe you can just give us uh, like a brief introduction of what NANSO is because there are people out there who really don't know what NANSO is. Okay. I think it's a political party. Oh, okay. no, no, I think to start off with, NANSO yeah. is not a political party okay. and NANSO is an apolitical students' organization. Mm -hmm. So, NANSO is a mother body students' organization that existed for over 34 years. Um, our money is basically to advocate for the students' rights. And students needs not only students also um, goes by extension the lenders in the Republic of Namibia I think that is one of the, the issues that uh, many people confuse to say no it's not only there for, um, for the students at university and all that but no NASA actually exists um, on all institutions it exists okay. on all um, levels of education we represent students from um, zero level that's preparatory all the way to the PhD students um, in the University of Namibia and international apart from that we advocate for um, Free, mm -hmm. equity, equal, and and and, and um, yeah, and free equality for for, for edu education for all students. Actually, free um, quality and access education for all students across the country. Mm -hmm. Because it wouldn't make sense that we are advocating for we are the the, the, the the ones in the forefront of advocating for the needs in the education of students and learners, but then this education is not accessible at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So we have to ensure that we are able to um, advocate for this particular. Um, you know pillars that I have just mentioned previously, mm -hmm. and apart from that, we are also then there for the wellness of the students because within our organization we have different positions which deals with um, different issues um, within our um, the, the organization that we are operating in. Yeah. For example, we have an office that is dealing with um, particularly gender issues as well as marginalized for our communities. Mm -hmm. We have an office which is now like mine dealing with um, international issues yeah. or issues for the Namibian students that are studying in other countries as well as. Issues for the international students from other countries that are studying within the uh, borders of Namibia, yeah. and then we also have um, an office that is dealing with um, sports, basically the wellness of the students. Uh, we have an office dealing with um, legal affairs of, of, of the organization, and then in the list of other um, issues that we deal with. So our money really is there for the Namibian child. We we are there whenever an issue is something that concerns the Namibian child in whatever way, whatever manner, mm -hmm. we we are always there. We are always there. So that is our, our, our biggest money that we have as an organization. Okay. Yes. okay, I think that's quite great because, like, even me, like, when I was in school, like, I only thought that Nanso was actually like just for students, it only represented students. Oh. I did not know that it also represented like from like uh, lower oh. primary, high, okay. like, all the level of education. But it's actually great too that you mentioned that. Yeah, so course, now, mm -hmm. okay, maybe before we because, um, maybe on, on that, I think probably the reason why. But even in, in, in the past, not, not really all structures were fully active. Mm -hmm. But now what I can be able to to, to, ask, to attest is that, um, you know, under the leadership of um, Comrade Lady Lucia Nishishi, mm -hmm. we, we were able to, to, to establish quite a number of branches. Mm -hmm. and so we have three structures, right? We have um, the branch structure, that is now like the basic structure yeah. of the organization. Mm -hmm. We have the regional executive committee, that is now the regional structure of the organization. Yeah, yeah. And we have the National Executive Committee, which is now um, the national body of organization. Um, so branches are existing at um, institutions, institutions of higher learning, as well as um, schools, uh, wherever, in different regions now. Okay. Uh, because we, we need to ensure that we are visible across the country. Yeah. And then um, the regional structures are visible in all 14 regions, 
and this is the regional structures are the ones that are then given a mandate or task to go to those different schools within the regions to set up those branches and also oversee to it that these branches are um, active. And then the National Reserve Committee oversees everything that now happens within the organization. So apart from NEC, we also have um, the General Students Council, which happens uh, twice between uh, Congress. And Congress is now the highest decision-making body. So GSC is the second highest. And then NEC is um, the third highest when you have to put Congress and GSC in place. Okay. However, in the absence of that, NEC becomes the decision, highest decision-making body of the organization. Mm -hmm. yeah, especially now that um, GSC is not sitting, so NEC is currently the highest decision-making body. Okay. So we actually open almost at the end of the year. Yeah. So what has Nanza, what project have you guys carried out without like within like the all the branches or something like that? Oh okay. Um quite a number of uh, activities actually. Yeah, yeah there are a lot. Um some activities are carried out at our branches, yes. some are carried out at our regions, yes. some are carried yeah. out at, 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 at the national level. Yeah. Um so at the beginning of this year, that was I think January all the way to May, first few days of May, we were under the leadership of um, Comrade Simon Tapopi, who was then, who's currently the former president of the organization. Um, under his leadership, quite a number of um, activities and quite a number of um, you know, functions were yeah. initiated. One of them having to be you know, access to uh, education campaign. Uh, you know what I mentioned earlier, our, one of our biggest pillars is access to education. Yeah. So every year at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. and now we've also tried to make it be a thing of happening from at the beginning of the year, as well as in the middle of the year since we have two registrations. Mm -hmm. So we have um, access to education campaign, which is now the, the biggest campaign that we, we run at the beginning of every year, mm -hmm. where we deploy our members um, to different institutions of higher learning as well as different schools um, at the basic education. So there are, there are two phases, right? Mm -hmm. There's a um, basic education phase yeah. and then there's a um, higher or tertiary education phase, right? So with the basic education phase, we deploy our members at different schools mm -hmm. to also be able to, 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 to engage um, the, the school principals together with the directors of the region and then assist the, um, the, the leadership of the region, okay, the directors and within the Ministry of Education with issues such as um, uh, what is the placement of learners at different schools? Issues such as um, how are we going to ensure that you no know, nobody is left out? Yeah. You no, know, how do we ensure that we accommodate all the learners? And then issues such as um, the registration is carried out effectively, and then also in compliance with the regulations that are set down by the Ministry of Education. Um, and also, to where, to where we can, like I know for some branches, we carry out donations and then give them to to, to, to certain schools, especially stationaries wise, and you know, and so forth. Apart from that, um, the tertiary education one, this one is uh, a bit complex. So what happens is we are deployed at different institutions. So at those institutions, we assist students, number one, to direct them at different venues, especially, you know, the first years, and they're not really aware as to where to go if you have to go for a registration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we then do is we assist them to direct them along the road. Um, if you want to go for a registration, go there. If you want to go pay, go this direction. If you want to go inquire about this and this, go yeah. this, this direction or that. Apart from that, we also assist them with the initial application, mm -hmm. which is one of the you know, main challenging uh, applications that we have for students because some of them apply on their own and then they don't really um, do it successfully. At the end of the day, they tend not to be awarded because they either mm -hmm. left or they, they failed to upload the documents in PDF yeah. or they didn't upload one document and, and, and um, other many other reasons. Apart from that, we also um, engage in Namibian police to be on campus so that they can be able to assist with the certifying of documents for the students. Because it, you know, it's so hard for a student that you are busy registering with the long existing lines at the university, you must again leave campus, go to town, yeah. and then stay in those long lines at the police station, then also go back. You know, so we, we need to be able to um, sort of assist students with cutting costs for exactly, care. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Uh, apart from that, we also, as part of the campaign, we um, assisted students with transportation to and from campus for a period of two weeks. Yeah. So we entered into an agreement with um, Sellers and Apuka, yeah. and then uh, we were able to at least, for the people that are now staying at the far areas, yeah. especially um, you know, in Katutura, Havana, yeah. yeah. Mishomise, yeah. Okuyangara, and all that, we provided transport, free transport for students actually. Okay. Yeah, it's only yeah. to pay. Okay. So you know, at least, you know, yeah. it's also a safety. It does also as far as the safety um, exactly. concern for, for the students really because true. camps can be very unsafe at many points. Exactly. And then apart yeah, from that, really yeah, apart from the campaign, we also ran what we call um, the Winter Drive campaign. This is uh, in the new tenure. It was run by our, um, our, sec our secretary for gender, that is um, Comrade Luen. 
Um, she, she ran a gender, I mean, sorry, not a gender, but a, a winter dive campaign. It was ran across the country as well, just like the other campaign that we ran. So with the winter dive, what we did was we had to ask for donations from, um, from just from the general public yeah. in, in all the regions, anything that can, they can really be able to, to assist with. Um, whether it's food, whether it's funds, whether it's, you know, something, warm clothing, yeah. jerseys and all that. But after we, we collected all those uh, across all the regions, we were able to then go somewhere and be able to, you know, hand them over to the needy yeah. people, uh, especially our learners and the ones that are in particular uh, homeless and so forth. Yeah, um, and then uh, apart from that, we also have one of our campaigns, uh, which we are still currently running, which is um, the digital inclusion campaign. This one I'm, I'm, I'm running it myself under my office. Okay. Um, it's actually in partnership with All African Students Union. All African Students Union is basically um, the international students organization that NANSO forms part of on the continental level. Apart from any other, we, we are actually partners to many other organizations, but this one is like now the main one in the yeah. um, um, African continental sphere. Uh, so it's a uh, partnership with them together with the students union across the southern country so what it aims is to basically um, address the issue of data costs for students and uh, also address the issue of how we can be able to ensure that there is an uh, inclusivity in terms of um, you know digital inclusion between yeah. in terms of our students and how they can be able to um, successfully carry out their studies without having to uh, use data as a reason that is independent so it's actually to, to further foster onto the the right to um, education uh, because you know it, it's a constitutionally provided for, for right uh, in the um, chapter three of the constitution, which is the Bill of Rights, highly protected. But then we get to see to it that you know in most cases, um, especially students, some there are some students that are attending their classes online, especially you know those are only online distance mode, yeah. and then there are some that are. Um, okay, some are face to face, but in the space are face to face, things like this research yeah. needs to be kept out on the internet. Yeah. Apart from the library, which is yeah. the hard copy books and all yeah. that, we still need to be able to use the internet and get other sources such as journals, articles, um, legislation, uh, cases, and all that. But then we can't be able to access such um, databases or such uh, uh, research platforms if uh, we don't have data or if the data fees are so high uh, in the country. So this company is then aimed at basically addressing the data costs in the country as well as um, um, seeing to it that students are really able to, to, to access their educational platforms um, on the internet without having to, to, to be impaired by it in, in, in any way. So the engagement is between um, telecommunication companies, the ministry, as well as people that are uh, advocates within the area, the social civil society organizations that are advocating for internet and then data costs in the country. Um, and then apart from that, as part of our um, anniversary where we did uh, cleaning campaigns in different um, did different uh, account actually most of the things that we ran okay I actually ran countrywide and in most cases these ones are then neck activities so they are run countrywide um, where we uh, we went to uh, informal settlements like for, for 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 the one that was in commerce it took place in Uganda um, at a certain uh, market. I just forgot the name. But we just like you know did the clean up uh, cleaning campaign. We just like you know went across that particular market, picked up papers and all that, and then just threw in the in the garbage and all that. And then, yeah, I also just did a small celebration for the organization. Um, apart from that, we also um, uh, we have a mental we had a mental month mental health campaign month as well. So that was done by the the, the, the yeah also the, the the gender office. So the, she was actually. Um, trying to, to, to see how we can be able to assist you know, the people that are having mental health issues. As we can see right now, the statistics is really bad in case of you know, suicides yeah. and people that are suffering uh, because of this whole mental health. Yeah, yeah. So our, one of our then biggest issues here is to see how we can be able to assist our members in um, uh, assisting them now with issues such as counseling, you know, availing ourselves if they want to talk to somebody, yeah. availing um, people that are within the, the social workers and psychologists to be able to speak to our students and so forth because we, we care for their being yeah. and it's particularly important that we you know apart from advocating for other things we also need to show our students that you know we care for you and if you are going through this and this please do come um, and we'll be able to tell you be able to assist you and then and, and yeah apart from that we're also able to assist one of um one of the students i think who was at the age of dropping out of school um, I think because of documentation, you know, basic certificates and all that, and apart from that, 
uh, funds. They, they were, there were no funds for the person to be able to go to school. And then issues of uniform and all that. So we engaged the ministry, uh, in particular the executive director. That was done by our secretary for basic education, who was then on the ground um, trying to, 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 to at least uh, collect resources and be able to put this child back into school. And then yeah, we were able to successfully do that. Okay, that's yeah. actually very nice to hear. Very nice, something very nice to do. Yeah. So yeah, um, the other thing is, well, like you know, like how can one, like what are the complex requirements one to actually join the leadership of Nanso? Um, okay, yeah. So it's, um, so there are different leadership levels, right? The branch level, um, the what is this? The regional level as well yeah. as the, the national level. So the, the 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 first requirement for you to be able to be um, a leader yeah. of the organization yeah. is that you need to be a member of the organization. Mm -hmm. You must be, yeah, a member with a, a paid up member um, with a membership card of the organization. Oh, so you have membership cards. Yeah, 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 the membership cards. Okay. Uh, I, and I think I was trying to, to see how we can be able to digitalize it, especially on our yeah. recently launched yeah, yeah, website. Yeah. Um, so you need to be a member of the organization. So for the branch, you must have been a member for at least um, a year. Or okay, let, let me say a year because like. For example, you know, they hold the elections um, towards the end of the year, like, for example, like now in October, because, you know, and the, the people that are being elected are people that are going to serve within, like starting from now until next year, October again. So it's not necessarily a year, but let's say more than six months. Let me just say if you have a membership organization and you've been at least actively participating and you have the interest and the yeah. leadership qualities, you can be able to, you know, qualify for it to be. Uh, a, a, an executive chair, an executive member of um, any of our branches and all that. However, you can only be an executive member of your branch at where you are a member. Like I cannot be registered at UNAM as a member and then I go to NAS and want to run for oh. president NAS. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. So NAS is for NAS students, yeah. UNAM is for UNAM okay. students, Triumphant is for Triumphant, I am just like that. Um, and then apart from that, let's be, uh, moving on to regional, you, need, you must have been a member for at least um, a year uh, for you to be able to, in this, in this case now, a full year now, for you to be able to qualify for leadership at the branch, I mean at the regional level. Um, and you, you must have been at least actively participating in your activity. You, know, you must be visible. We, we, we don't want people that um, occupy spaces, but then at the end of the day, they, they tend to not necessarily serve students. So you, you must have been able to um, demonstrate leadership that look, you know, I've served here, I've done this, I've been actively participating in the campaign yeah. organization, I've done this and all that. So with that, um, allow me to, to, to serve the students, you know, yeah. give me the opportunity, let me see how I'm able to, to, to assist, you know, in being child further. Um, and then apart from that, uh, at the national level, you must have been a member for, um, I think, two years plus. But, but, but this is a usually change because it's not necessarily the constitution that regulates it, but it's um, more of a, it's an electoral guiding document that um, is adopted by the General Students um, Assembly, I mean, Junior Students Council, pardon me, as well as um, the National Students Congress. Um, so it changes based on the, the, the circumstances. So like, yeah, for, for NEC, you must have been um, a member for two years, uh, actively participating. However, for the top positions, the, the, the requirements are also a bit um, higher, where you must have been part of, you must have either been a chairperson, or part of the General Students Council. So the members that form part of the General Students Council are regional therapists, therapists across the country, as well as um, the National Reserve Committee, the whole, the entire National Reserve Committee, as well as um, our technical staff and, and, and honorary members. Okay. Yeah, but now we also amend the constitution, so we have also appointed um, six non-voting members that are also going to be part of the General Students Assembly. So those are the people that are able to I ran for top four positions like this now presidency, vice presidency, um, secretary general, deputy secretary general, and finance by extension, ICT, that is information communication technology. Yes. Yeah, so I think those are the requirements that are um, needed for somebody to be able to run for position in organization okay. in different structures. Um, I see, like you guys do a lot of like you guys do a lot of work, a lot of running around and all that. Yeah. Like to like especially the executive of the people and the on the national um body like you guys get paid. Oh, thank you for asking that question. And, Yo <laughs> No, I so people in, in and, most cases the people yeah. ask like and, you know, now which you're so de de you know, dedicated and yeah, so invested yeah. into this NASA things and all that, how much does NASA give you? Yeah. It, it, it's a question I get a lot of times. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, maybe there's some people that are going around yes. 
the masses are buying. But yeah. um, NASA members are not paid. Mm -hmm. NASA members don't get paid. It, it, whether you're at the national level, yeah. um, you're at the national level, yeah. price level, and all that, we don't get paid. It, um, it, it's actually a voluntary, a voluntary activity that we, okay. we take up on as a responsibility. Understand? Just like the way we, we, we sort of, um, what is this? We volunteer in any other organizations. Yeah. Sort of, it's the same thing when it comes to NASA. Mm -hmm. We just basically volunteer and do it um, on our, you know, as part of the responsibilities that we have. Understand? And then, it, all, honestly, it comes with the passion that we have yeah. for the students. Because if you have to look at it, it's not everybody that can be able to sacrifice a lot of things um, for you to be able to uh, be on the ground and be able to assist other students. For many cases, um, our academics sometimes they, 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 the academics really suffer at the expense of you know the things that we have to do because of the organization. Yeah. But um, in as much as the case, we still are able to um, you know balance the tone all time. Understand? So sacrifice like this, our time instead of you know celebrating or being um, you know going to class like other people, especially. Um, throughout the course of the yeah. week and just just most of the times enjoying yeah. and celebrating yeah. as we are you know we are on the ground we are busy and all that you know as we speak right now yeah. my colleagues are in a meeting you understand why it's a sunday where i'm yeah. supposed to be resting and all yeah. that yeah. And that's what i'm saying you know as, as now so we you know it just comes with patience it's just something we love doing yeah. assisting students assisting yeah. young people um and people that are really needs to be in assistance mm -hmm. so yeah we don't get paid it is it, it, yeah so you really have to have that passion for like saving people and all the things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it also I think it also even though it doesn't come with monetary uh, benefits, it's yeah. like comes with benefits in other oh, ways. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, you're getting the experience and then the Exactly. Well one of one of it having to be is that you know you have um what is this you get to travel. Yeah. Um, exactly. especially when we're busy running our campaigns across the country. Also, it depends on the availability of the resources. Yeah. Um, you get to, to, to meet, you know, quite, you know, formidable young people in society yeah. because it's, it's a community that you form part yeah. of, and it's a community of young-minded, or uh, like-minded individuals. Yeah. So you get, you know, to connect with these individuals. You get to, um, to see how we can be able to learn from one another exactly. and so forth. And plus, the fact that we are also a flexible organization, mm -hmm. we're able to operate in every space. So we're able to partner up with any organization that you can be able to think of. Yeah. Yeah. I can be able to partner up with, for example, Applied, the African organization that I spoke oh, yeah. about, which is a, um, you know, it, what, what Applied does, it, it's a leadership organization. It, it, it um, sort of trains um, young people in different areas, such as entrepreneurship, uh, youth leadership, and this, uh, so it's civic development. So we, we as NASA, through our school of leadership, are able to partner up with Applied. So Applied is able to step in and be able to train our members or be able to um, train. The, our LRCs and yeah. people that did our various strategies understand. Yeah. And then any other organizations, gender based on the, the gender based organizations. Um, yeah, any organization. As I said also yeah. the internet society within our campaign that we're busy running and then the list goes on, the debate society. Yeah. Because at the end of the day it's just something that has to be able to, to not benefit our members. Yeah, yeah and then, then just different you get to also uh, get that disability, you get to, you know, um, uh, what is this? Whenever you prepare to be doing something, for example, like now, oh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, going to be appearing on the YouTube channel, and also, you know, different um, television yeah. um, appearances that make radio interviews, okay. which is really something that can be able to, to you know, to make a name for yourself yeah, yeah. and also to just build up on your uh, career as an yeah. individual because, you know, you are a, a person that's trying to. You just find something for yourself before exactly. you are restoring all that. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. That's very true. So um, the other question actually before we go to other main questions, mm -hmm. because we also got other questions from students from all over Namibia. Oh, okay. And but I only chose I only chose three of them that I brought like that you can actually at least answer for us. Okay. But then like what like what are the procedures actually for one to qualify for Congress? Oh Congress. Um so let me just start off by saying Congress is, as I have mentioned earlier, the decision, highest decision making body mm -hmm. in the organization. And this is where the National Executive Committee is um, elected. Yeah. The people that go to Congress are people within our structures. Mm -hmm. So um, it happens every two years. Mm -hmm. Like now that it happened in May, so the next Congress is going to happen um, in 2024. Mm -hmm. Because the, the first year is going to be next year, May. Then next or next year maybe the second year. So we'll have our Congress in um in twenty twenty four. Um so who is eligible to go to Congress? Mm -hmm. The constitution provides for um provides that there the, the, the needs to be a list of delegates that need to be sent to Congress. 
and this list is uh, comprised of 16 people uh, minus the, the chairperson. Oh. So we're looking at no, actually 15 people minus the chairperson. So in, in total, we're looking at 16 people per region, including the chairperson. Oh. Because uh, these 15 people, um, they have to be members, first of all. Um, in most cases, it is it's basically the REC or the Regional Executive Committee that comes. However, because the REC is only comprised of 10 positions, so we then have um, 10 plus 6. So we have 6 people that are then just taken from our branches. Oh. Uh, in, in cases, it can be um, what is this? people that are chosen as like chairpersons from different branches that actually get to form part of the delegation that goes to Congress. So every region submits a list of 16 people. Um, either the regional executive chairpersons, I mean the regional executive committee members, um, certain branch members that are also actively participating in the works of organization. Um, and then, yeah, and then those people are then the ones that come to Congress and then be able to then form part of uh, the delegation with the, every one else that comes from across the country. And this is, so uh, our Congress is attended by over 240 um, students plus going um, upwards. Yeah. So in, 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 in some cases where maybe one of the um, regional executive committee members is unavailable, uh, we also take from from our branch structures. Yeah. So and, and sometimes we apart from that list, we also do invitations where we get to invite people because of the support that they've given to Congress. For example, you know, we'll invite you because you were there for us when we needed you. You know you in as much as you don't have any position in the organization, at least you can say you have been able to assist the organization um, where you know we are running this campaign, stepping your assist here, here and there and so forth. So with that we are able to say, okay, look, I think Comrade Nabot has really um, assisted the organization a lot. Let us um, invite him to come and be a non-voting member at Congress and just participate as well like all okay. Yeah. So that's also one form that we you know people get to come to Congress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's great. Okay, so now we come to the questions. So I like I got uh, questions from people uh, from different regions, like students actually. So I only chose like three questions, which actually I think two are questions and then the others just kind of I think a suggestion or something. But I am not going to mention the names or the people that actually provided the questions, but I try to copy like the, okay. just copy and paste. Okay. okay. Copy and paste the questions as I receive them. Uh -huh. So the first one is actually, I would like to know why NANSO has founding members who are no longer students still in leadership positions. Aren't they supposed to be giving an opportunity to other people? Some people are always seen to be in leadership positions even even when they aren't even run for even though they don't run for them. And they, I don't know if I should mention names because there are also names. No, you don't need to mention names. Okay. I think for confidentiality. Yeah, for confidentiality. Yeah, no, like the names, like uh, putting the names, the example of names that are actually people that are still in NATO that are not students. Mm -hmm. That maybe you can just confirm. Uh, Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I received two names, and the first one is actually apparently Esther Simon and Lucera Bambala. Esther Simon and Lucera Bambala. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> just a bit to confirm. Um, so, Esther Simon, first of all, that is our former president. Yeah. One of our former presidents. She's, she was one of our first female, not one of our, but she was the first female yeah. president of the organization. Okay. She served from 2017 yeah, to yeah. Um, 2019. <laughs> yes. Um, Esther Simon. Currently, yeah, she's actually still a student mm -hmm. because she's, she's currently pursuing um, a bachelor's degree in law, honors in the of Namibia. Mm -hmm. It's just that, you know, right now we are in an area, in an era where um, there are different modes of studies. You understand? There's yeah. uh, full time studies, there's part time, there's also online, which is also referred to as distance. You understand? Um, <clears throat> unlike full time, where you get to attend classes every day in part time, online mode of study doesn't require to be in class. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, for as long as you are a student, you are doing assignments and all that. You are a student, and the national constitution doesn't um, make a provision to say, or it doesn't necessarily say, uh, positions or leadership positions are strictly for online for for full time students. You understand? It doesn't exclude the people that are doing part time or online. Even myself, I'm actually an online student, also doing more. You understand? Yeah. So SSM was a student even when the term came to the end in 2019. Yeah. But the, but she she still just currently a member, but she doesn't serve any position. Yeah, she she she's a member, but an honorary member. Oh. So an honorary yeah, member yeah, is yeah. basically an honor that you know the national Reserve committee yeah, honors yeah. to one of our former members that we've um, that we've had in, in in the past. Yeah, and then um, as of um, Luciano Kambala, I think I'd like to also just make it clear that at, at Congress, one of um, the one of the issues that we 
we will look at when we are, you know, during the betting process, yeah. is that we, somebody needs to give their, what is this? Okay. So as I was saying, um, one of, you know, during our vetting process, yeah. we ask for a proof of registration. Yeah. And then that proof of registration is to prove that you are a student before mm. you can be able to, um, before you can be able to, to run for a position. Yeah. So when it comes to Conversation Kambale, it's all the same thing. Mm. Um, he is also a student um, pursuing his uh, master's at something in finance, mm. if not mistaken, that is also doing, I'm not sure if it's with NAST or UNAM, that I can't be really be able to, to confirm. Oh, confirm. But yeah, he, he is a student as well. Oh. Yeah, and he's our current okay. vice president, um, elected in May. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm. So the other question, so like I just copy and paste on these yeah, questions. Yeah, so no okay. Problem. So what do you say about this accusation? The son accused the president of Nanso and its secretary general, and the secretary to the student president of being captured by the members of Swapo Party Youth League. Being captured by the members of Swapo Party Youth, Youth League. League. Yeah, like it's like the Nanso is kind of being like a politically kind of oh, now politically oh, okay. affiliated and all that, and not serving its purpose. The Oh, yeah. Okay. No. Um. You know, when when I started off with the interview, I did uh, mm. mention that NASA is an apolitical organization. Yeah. <clears throat> and 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 unfortunately, in as much as we you know we say that it's an apolitical organization, we still have members of um uh, is it the public or members of society yeah. uh, that tend to still want to politicize everything. Yeah. And and and. I, I I really don't understand as to you know why that is the case and all that. I mean, obviously, if we have to go back in in, in the history of the organization, yeah. we'll um, get to understand or get to see that you know back in the yes that was you no know, pre independence and just right after independence, NASA was an affiliated to the Swapo Party. Oh, yeah. But then that one was you know the affiliation was dealing NASA was dealing from the party simply because of um, the responsibility that the organization had to then currently um, fulfill, which is. Um, having to represent all students and learners across the country uh, without you no know, uh, looking at what political party or political affiliation these people are from. Yeah. Understand? Uh, but then we've in the past had people that uh, constantly pressure on the matter as to Nanso having to be an affiliate to the Swapo Party and all that, mm -hmm. which is not the case. You know, people uh, always do that, especially if we if we have to look back at um, look under the tenure of Comrade uh, Esther. Esther Simon, that mm -hmm. was 2017 to 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the point in time where the organization really faced a lot of, um, I'm not sure if, not backlashes, mm -hmm. but yeah, let me just say a lot of criticisms, a lot of oh. infights, a lot of um, people not necessarily even wanting to work with the organization. The reason oh. being because people, you no, know, we, we have people that run for positions at congresses, yeah. but then at the end of the day, they, they are never, when the results come out that they, they that they've lost, mm -hmm. they are never satisfied or they're never happy with the results as they are. Yeah. So, as a result of that, it then becomes an issue of uh, no, I was supposed to win. So they 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 they, they, they tend to to oppose everything the current leadership is doing. Yeah. And that was a point in time where accusations such as you now the one that you're making now yeah. uh, were so high about you no. Know, the organization leadership having to be captured and all that but, mm -hmm. but but that's not the case i mean we have people within the organization that are also members of other political parties yeah, understand yeah. if we didn't if we if we are then saying that you know the organization is affiliated to the party mm -hmm. of course we won't uh, accept anybody that forms part of any other political party instead mm -hmm. we won't all want to represent students if they are from other political parties yeah. but then because we understand our mandate our goal mm -hmm. we then feel see the need for us to be able to uh, be, represent everybody yeah. from whatever backgrounds, and we must also just make it categorically clear that um, we are not affiliated to any political party. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that. I think that's clear. Okay. Okay. So the other one is actually I don't. This one is not the question. It's okay. kind of a suggestion, yeah. and it's kind of I don't know. Okay. So it, this one is actually from Kavango. Kavango. I received okay. it from somebody from Kavango. Okay. So is Kavango or Rondo? They are all the yeah. same. Yeah, they are all the same. Yeah, Rondo is a town in yeah. so okay. Kavango. So it says government offices and schools regard Nanso as the official representation representative of learners and students in Namibia. However, Nanso does not even hold fifty percent of the membership of all registered learners and students. Political youth weeks also have um, large membership with learners and students in Namibia, but are pushed aside when called in by members to help them address school-related matters. I believe it's high time that NANSO and other parties such as the LPM Youth Week and SAN are given equal footing in tackling matters involving learners and students as all 
as all have members in their institutions. Nanso should invite other youth bodies to the table to discuss and resolve issues affecting all learners and students. We all have solutions that can work for our members. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> so the, the, the structure of the question is making it look like Nanso is probably you know, pushing away organizations or and all that yeah. but but um i wouldn't want to comment on the modus operandi of mm. other organizations or yeah. uh, political wings and all that mm. however um you know when it comes to nansen mm. okay right now we recently launched our what is our mass mobilization campaign mm. which is uh our journey to 400,000 members mm. across the country mm. um last time i checked we stood at um Okay, I don't know what the website currently says, mm. but okay, this is a bit updated because it's from, it's from last year, mm. where we were at about 50, 000, 30 to 50,000 members mm. um, um, that we had. Um, so the, 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 the way that we represent students, mm. yeah, we don't necessarily represent students based on membership. Mm. We don't, you know, when a student comes to me now and like, say, look, Nabot, I have this situation going on, yeah. can you be able to assist? I want to ask a student, are you a member of NANSO? Oh, no. Yeah. When we represent students, we represent them collectively. Mm. When, for as long as somebody comes to me now, yeah. and they represent us, we, I mean, and they request for us to be able to mm. assist them or to be able to represent them and whatsoever, we don't necessarily require them to be a member of the organization, mm. but we just go ahead and represent them in whatever way we can, you understand? Mm. That is because um, we don't necessarily, okay, in as much as we have the members, we have the numbers, yes, of course, we don't necessarily base our operational activities or mm. our modus operandi based on the number of members that we have yeah but it's basically if we are able to resolve the matter mm. why not you understand exactly. i can't push away a student just because somebody's saying mm. we don't have more than 50 percent of the learners yeah. that would be wrong of us to do you understand and 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 for so long as somebody comes to me mm. and i'm able to resolve that problem or somebody comes to us and we're able to resolve the problem yeah. we will be able to go ahead and resolve it and 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 um when it comes to then how we can be able to deal with it with students' issues um, as a collective. Um, I think, not I think, but officers or stakeholders are open yeah. to, 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 to engagements or are open to all these discussions whenever somebody from another organization are <clears throat> willing to assist certain students and all that. Mm -hmm. It's not like if, if somebody from another organization goes to NSF and, and asks NSF about a certain issue, NSF is going to be like, no, we're not um, going to listen to you. Because we have NASA that we're listening to and so forth, you understand? Yeah. So we are all in the same space and we are all operating in the same space. Yeah. We, we, we don't necessarily, um, we, we don't say other organizations should not be co or should not be existing as the organization or as NASA is existing. Yeah. But all we're saying is what we are doing, we're doing it for our members and we're doing it to the best interest of our members. And for so long as it's really something that is going to benefit an unbeaten child, yeah. we are going to do it. Because at the end of the day, it's who that we are doing it for, and not necessarily any other individuals and whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. So I think I hope that answers the question. Okay. 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 Yeah. I think that. So like most of these learners, the students that you help, they are actually not members of NAN. So like you. Yes. Anybody. Yes. Some of them are not members because we don't force membership of the organization upon learners. That would be you know force and all that. Yeah. It's something you have to, to to take on voluntarily. Yeah. If they are willing to you know be part of an actual a card holding member, yeah. then yes, um, the memberships are open and then they they get to join and so forth. Okay. Yeah, but but um, I think also what has happened in the past that we didn't really, um, what is this? Okay, we will sign up members, but then we didn't have a proper database in place to be able to um, sort of, uh, what is this, keep, keep track of our members and all oh. that. And then we, we tend to lose some of the members that we had. Not necessarily lose them as, lose them as members, yeah. but lose them as in, uh, like on, on the records. On yeah, the that's why we've decided to go or resolute on the online platform now to be able to... Yeah. Um, sort of get their membership from there or sign up through the online platform. Okay, but then yeah. like as a Nanso body, like is Nanso like open to working with other such as Sun and other political youth week and all that, especially when it comes to solving issues uh, regarding students and learners and all that. Yeah, of course, of course, we don't have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah if, if they have a, an issue they want to uh, collaborate on, mm -hmm. then they can come. Like recently, mm -hmm. um, okay, not really recent, during our Congress, mm -hmm. I, I, I think a few weeks after our Congress, mm -hmm. We, we held an engagement with the Secretary General for All African Students Union, Peter, mm -hmm. Peter Konji. He was here in Namibia um, just on a, on a working visit and so forth. We 
has to hold an event, more like a, an engagement event yeah. with um uh, what is this uh, Sasu, and then we were able to invite other organizations. We had members that came to the particular engagement, and they were from um, Students Union of Namibia. Understand? Oh. Yeah, we were also able to participate in that particular discussion that we had. Oh. If we didn't want them, they would have told them to leave to the moment that they were But that is not. <laughs> Uh, our organization or the principles that we we will live by. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. Yeah, I think like we are actually coming to the end of it, the session. But mm-hmm. then this is actually our signature question. Like, is the youth, is the youth, um, is a young person who is actually into leadership and all that, mm-hmm. and already serving all these people. So, what is as a Namibian citizen? So, what is your dream for Namibia, or for the Namibian youth? My dream for the Namibian youth. Yeah. Um. Well, first of all, it's uh, generally just to, to, to one day see Namibia having to, you know, to, to at least dealt with more than 90% of the issues surrounding the education sector, mm. where we don't have um, students having to be retained mm. from schools just because uh, they don't have a proper uniform or they don't have a full uniform or, or whatsoever. Well, we don't have schools that are chasing students back just because they, you know, they are here is not properly cut or not properly cut and all that. Mm-hmm. And this one of uh, the issues that we actually recently dealt with, the hair policy, um, where student, I mean, where, where education basically mm-hmm. is accessible to each and every individual, each and every child in the country. Mm-hmm. And apart from being accessible, it's also uh, quality education. You know, we, we can't also just limit it to um, accessibility, but it needs to go as far as the education has to be quality for all students. Mm-hmm. And then, we were also looking, I also foresee Namibia at least um, one day having to have uh, successfully dealt with the, the issue, the mm-hmm. current issue that we are think, fighting with as a country, which is the issue of unemployment, youth unemployment, or graduates unemployment. It, it's really huge. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, we need to really see what measures we can be able to come up with and <clears throat> address that particular issue. So that's one of the issues that I also foresee that we should be able to deal with as a, as a country. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my dreams as well, um, and, and and apart from that, is generally to you know see a, a safe Namibia. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't have to. I shouldn't be worried about you know whether the cab I'm getting into is safe for me to. You know, yeah. especially now the, yeah. the, the, the females. Mm-hmm. You, sh- you shouldn't be worried whether uh, when I'm getting home, somebody's probably waiting for me who's then going to probably assault me or whatever. Yeah. You know, people. Sh- so I, I I foresee a, a, a free Namibia, a, a safe Namibia. Um, and in Namibia where we can be able to live in harmony, peace, and don't necessarily have to be having to be subjected to all these various harms yeah. and, and, and issues exactly. in, in the country. Exactly. So I think in short that that's what I'll, I'll be able to say. Exactly. Was exactly. That. Yeah, I think like yeah, I think you did justice with that. Like I, there was actually a time where person like like for me, like I really trust the taxi drivers. Even yeah. though I'm going to a place and I don't know the place, I'm like, ah, the taxi drivers will take me there. But now it's actually very scary yeah. to go into a taxi exactly. and then you just have to think of your face your exactly. safety. Especially for females it, yeah. it's really hard. Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much, man, for being here, for taking your time and answering, getting to and un- giving us answer to these questions and all that. And yeah, thank you so much. And I hope I actually did justice to the to the rest of the people. Uh, yeah, I really hope so. No, it, it, it's really a pleasure. It's okay. really a pleasure. Okay. And perhaps just my last words to the people yeah. is um for the people that are interested mm. in um being part of the organization mm. or you know the membership of the organization, yeah. they should join the organization through our website. Mm. We recently launched it, and there's a link somewhere there where you can be able to sign up and be a member. Mm. And apart from that, reach out to um, to the leadership. Reach out to the people, and whenever we're having events, come through, come and support. Mm. See how we can be able to participate and be able to be part of the fight that we're fighting. Mm. You know, we need more people. We need people that are willing to work, people that are willing to assist other exactly. individuals in society, yeah. and people that are willing to, to grow, you yeah. know. And then, yeah, we're also available on um, various social media platforms, um, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. Facebook is uh, Namibia National Students Organization, mm-hmm. official. Twitter is um, at Nanso National. And then Instagram is um, Nanso um, underscore official. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then our email is also available on um, or on our website, mm. the general email is info at nanso.org. Mm. But then, if there's a particular organize or a particular office that you want to mm. 
to sort of um, communicate to. Yeah. There are also emails that are available on our website. Every, I think everything, yeah, everything is, is existing. Okay, I think you will just provide me like with the whole, the, all the details of oh, your, okay. your social links, your email yeah, and everything. Yeah, and yeah. I can actually add it in the description yes, box yes, yeah, for yeah, anybody sure. in the membership link as well for okay. people that are interested in joining the on like through oh, online, online and all that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So a person can apply like to be a member like online, online, yeah. online now. Okay, that's mm. actually very much easier right now. Yeah. So yeah, um, thank you so much. Really 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 appreciate you, your time for coming here yeah it's a so yeah that's your last words yeah i think those are my last words and also yeah probably just for myself as well yeah um, you can find me on different social media yeah. platforms um facebook linkedin twitter instagram um linkedin that's uh, my, and my the good thing about me is that my username on all social media platforms is the same oh. which is nabot nangolo one Oh. So just number one, one, starting off with um, Facebook. One the number, one yeah, the word. The one the number. Oh, okay, okay. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. That's um, my, my, my social media. Are you the number one though? Like are you the one, the first generation? Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm actually the second to think of it. I think I'm actually looking to that. Oh. Okay, but then I've built a brand on the word. So <laughs> I think we might just as well. I've built the brand. <laughs> Yeah. I see. Uh, I see. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I see. And, and I'm you know, open to more engagements for the people that are you know, willing to engage more and engage further. Okay. They can always reach out and, and see how we can be able to, you know, build an ambiance we want. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And also building other people. Is it because I like I believe you are really inspiring a lot of people, mm. and especially people in Nanzo and all. Like you guys that are like in the leadership position and very active in the communities and all that. Mm. You are actually the inspiration of other kids like especially kids on the lower primary and all that they are looking up to you and all that exactly so yeah you guys yeah. i think you should keep up the good work and Thank keep so serving the students and all that and serving like making sure that and just working toward to making actually sure that everybody we like all Namibian children have equal education quality education and all that no matter where they are even though they are deep deep in Okongo or deep deep they able to get quality education and yeah mm -hmm. so thank you so much oh, it's a pleasure Elizabeth. okay and we look forward to more engagements like this okay okay cool all right.